welcome back. It's a couple days past, um, I'm filming this, it's a couple days past 4th of July. We had a good one, Independence Day here in the United States. Uh, went to some fireworks in uh, the kind of larger town near us. Then we went to a small town fireworks. That was on Thursday night. We went to small town fireworks on Friday night. And um, they're really good, put on by some local people and did a wonderful job. Um, but anyway, I want to talk to you about going back some holidays. Let's talk about um, a couple of disjointed days here. Father's Day was back in June, and my daughters end up um, using some gift cards they had and went out on Amazon and bought me this Diablo. I'm not sure if it's showing up. It's Diablo, what is that called? The um, Sermit 2 carbide. It's one that uh, goes in a chop saw and um, doesn't put out very many sparks. And I thought, thank you girls, but I don't have a chop saw. <laughs> and so <laughs> then they went off and they came back in and started to sing a happy birthday to me, which is not for till September, late September. And they had bought me a chop saw. And uh, I've been saying for 20 years I'd like to get a chop saw. And I'm in an abrasive one, but I was talking to him the other day and I told him, I said, I think I'm changing my mind. I'm thinking about going to one of these, um, these, you know, one with the carbide teeth, they won't go through as probably thick of materials, the abrasive ones, but I still have my bandsaw for that from my Harbor Freight bandsaw. But I was looking at these Evolution um, brand, and I seen a lot of people using them online, so I thought I'd give it a try. Uh, they kept going up in price on me. They were like 180 something dollars at Home Depot, and then I looked when I was going to go. I thought about buying one. I went back and looked again. It was up to 197. I was like, holy, God, I better hurry and buy one. Thought maybe go back down. It didn't. It went up to 220 something, 229 U.S. dollars, and that's what they bought it at, and uh, used a lot of their saved money. So I guess I got to get them a pretty good Christmas this year. <clears throat> so anyway, I'm going to take this out of the box. I hadn't opened it. I just picked it up. Let me back y'all up here a little. You don't need to see my head anyway. All right. This is kind of sort of an unboxing. Even though it uh, didn't come anything. I had to actually go down. They just gave me the order form. And I went down to Home Depot and picked it up. Um, it was only at the certain ones in our area. All the major ones in the town never would have them. It was one out in the little boonies out here that Home Depot there that had it. So we have our instructions and contrary to popular belief, I will read over these because I don't want to mess something this expensive up. I know this isn't a four or $500 DeWalt or something, but uh, I still think it's expensive especially for a part-timer like me. So, I'm not sure what some of this stuff is in here. And uh, a huge Allen screw. And a bunch of other little knickknacks. And that's some kind of a bracket. That's got some weight to it. It's like a couple pieces of angle iron. I want to take it out. There we go. A couple pieces of angle iron on a metal plate. Or something. Who knows what. And as usual, styrofoam. Lots and lots of styrofoam. Okay. Let me set this down so I can set it up there. That was loud. And in the bottom of the box. Nope, doesn't appear to be. I was a little concerned because the box had a big dent in it, but the styrofoam protected it. Busted the styrofoam, but it kind of protected it. So, set that over there. Doesn't look like there's a whole much to this. 
a whole bunch to it. Yeah. See, and it comes with a saw, which is supposed to last so many 10, 20 times or something. To, or I don't even know how many times longer than an abrasive saw. If you don't know the difference, let me get down here up close and personal. Um, it's hot in here. It's almost noon. Eh, shop says it's about 87 degrees Fahrenheit, but it's just about 120% humidity, it feels like. <clears throat> um, I had to educate myself the difference on chop saws. The chop saws with the abrasive ones, you cannot switch back and forth from all I, from what I know anyway. Somebody probably tell me differently in the comments below. But the difference between these is the abrasive ones will turn, you know, 3,900, 4,000 RPM or somewhere in that ballpark. I can't remember the exact numbers, but it'll turn a lot more than these. These will turn like 16, 1,700 RPMs. I don't know if it says on one of these or not. It says max RPM on like on this plate is 1800 RPMs. So, uh, if that's even showing up, I doubt it. Anyway, so much glare in here from these overhead lights. But like I said, I've got a Harbor Freight bandsaw that I've used for three or four years or more. And, uh, and it's still working. I've had to fix a few little things on it, but, um, but it works fine for what I do. I mean, I, it's not the most precise and it's not wet, you know, got a an oil lubricant on it or anything so um it's not that you know it's it was i got it with all the sales and it was on sale and the 20 percent discount i think i paid 180 or 90 dollars for the um bandsaw which is less than this thing costs but it's a slow i spent i had to cut a bunch of square tubing up for a project i did which i had a film for i'll try to um i think it's over here I'll try to put um a link to it up here in the card a uh, video I did uh, where I welded up a trailer tailgate I think I did a video on that yeah I did one anyway I'm sorry <clears throat> um, but um, but it I spent an hour just cutting up some square tubing in that bandsaw it was just way too slow and uh, and I thought you know if I've got a lot of cutting to do and if and I didn't even cut angles they were all square cuts if I have to cut a lot of angles, which my next few projects I'm going to do has a lot of angle cuts, I'll be, you know, adjusting that Harbor Freight to 40. It'll go all kind of angles, but it's, you need something external because their, their little gauge they have on there, mine was peeled, already peeled off almost. It's just useless. So I have to have something else to give me the, tell me the angle it's at. And it's, so it's, you know, it, but it's good for, you know, straight stuff as long as you can keep everything lined up good. And then, uh, but for angles, it just takes forever. And then you gotta put it back straight. Then you gotta go put it back angles. And then you gotta change this angle. And I've got, stuff I've gotta do is gonna be different angles. It's not like I'm going 45 only, and then I'll be doing different angles. And you'll see when I do those projects. So I thought this would work a lot simpler. And I can see here, let me move you. I'm not sure if that's showing up or not, but. I showed you where it gave me this Allen wrench. And that goes back in here. Think of that showing up. Get over top of it more. And you can adjust your angles. 0, 15, 30, 45. So it's not extremely accurate. I'll probably what I'll do is is um, I have a uh, um, you know a angle gauge that's digital. And I'll probably use it and then set it with that more so than trying to use these numbers on here. <clears throat> but you can set that angle. I thought it didn't have a knob, but I think that's the other thing in the plastic bag. This one. I think that's the knob. Yep, that's what it is. Okay, so that goes on here. I had to get some screwdrivers to put that in. Oh, that's actually, see if that's coming out or not. That's actually um, new bushings for the motor. I'm assuming it's got bushings in there. Well, 
let's fire it up here in a little bit and see what it'll do. <clears throat> uh, the other thing I was going to mention besides this uh, cutting at 16-1700 RPMs, which is less than half of what the abrasive blades cut at, uh, they claim it'll cut four times faster than an abrasive blade. But I, mean, I don't remember what the limits are on abrasive blades. I've used the abrasive chop saws, not since I moved here and started this shop and stuff, but when I used to work in a welding shop, when I used to fix sinkholes, when I used to uh, do some welding and just some different things, I used a lot of chop saws with the abrasive blades. And you can, you know, if you got the time to sit there and grind through it, you can go through a lot. Now, you get the abrasive blades use a lot of friction, of course, and so you get a lot of um, heat on them. These claim that there's no burrs, no heat, um, and no sparks. I say there's probably little sparks, not no sparks, but it's nothing like those chop saws. That's one thing that was kind of worried me is, is um, my shop here is, you know, it's got, it's got wood saws, I got wood stuff going on, and, um, and I was really worried about sparks. So, that's one thing I want to talk about is, is the speed of this, how fast it cuts, and the, the limit on this is it says um, it'll only do up to quarter inch thick walled material, like up to a quarter inch angle iron or flat stock or, or square tubing with quarter inch walls. Just a quick note, I've read through with some instructions here. Uh, some things about it, you, can't, you cannot use um, high speed steel blades, apparently, saw blades. The HHS case, or HSS in case you're, uh, I hadn't planned on it, but can't use them. Uh, I talked about some other things, but kind of wanted to go over some of the features on it real quick, and then we'll cut something. <clears throat> so, some of the points here, of course, it mentions this um, guard, the inner and outer guard. Let's see if I, first off. <coughs> Spin that around. This chain is pushed down and you can pop the chain off. That's all that's for. You just hook that on so you can lock it down. And as you can see the, the guard here opens and closes with it. So it's got this bottom guard, a top guard. You can swivel this, this closes in and out. Your chain to lock it down. They call, get this in picture here. Okay, call that an arbor guard here. Uh, you can take your Phillips loose and slide it back so you can take this thing off. This right here is a lockdown. Oops, I can't see that, can you? Sorry. Okay, that little, that little plunger there. That's the lockdown so you can take your saw out. That's pretty much it. And this is a down at the bottom down here. This is a stop for the this whole thing coming down. So let's plug it up and get it going. You have to push in so that it goes. And so let's cut off the end. This was a burn off end. I'm just gonna cut it off with this piece of Langon iron. See how much Well, that didn't have a whole lot of sparks after all. And that wasn't even this fancier $70 blade. I'm not going to break this one out until I wear that one out. So I may never break that one out the way this one's going. That's the very first cut. A little burr on there. I didn't cut all the way. I didn't push all the way through apparently. But I'm holding that after that cut. It's not even warm hardly. Barely warm. Not even as cold. I like that. I've always used a brace of blade type chop saw, so this is the first. Nice. Real happy. Let's we'll see how it works with other stuff. I got a bunch of cutting to do, but not today. Today it's 92 degrees out, in, or in the shop. I don't know what it is outside the shop in the sunlight. And about 832% humidity. That's a pretty accurate guess. Sorry about the light back here. 
<clears throat> that's why I usually sit down. But let me unplug this. Yeah. That's why I sit down because my tripod's too short. So that's the evolution chop saw. Set in here, it rotates at 450 RPMs. I was thinking I did about 1600, but it says 450. Um, I'll just hold that up and you can pause it and read the thicknesses of the various metals and woods. Hopefully that's showing up okay. Um, anyway. Can't wait to give it a try. You'll be seeing it. I won't be featuring anymore. This is like an unboxing showing everything, but I'll be going and, and using it for uh, projects and you'll be seeing it in the background being used on other stuff.